Okay, guys, so we are moving on to paper two, right? And let's look at question one. So it says Mapocho plans to purchase a Bucky, right? It's a motor vehicle. She received the following quotation from a car dealer on 28 February 2018. Okay, so this is a little bit of an extract from the quote. The selling price is this much. She gets this discount. Um, there's these extra accessories, a smash and grab, door protector, other charges is on the road charges, transactional transaction fee, and then it basically gives a subtotal VAT, right? That's always important, and then the total due, okay? So let's see what they want from us, okay? It says, use the information above to answer the questions that follow. So it says, calculate, round it off to one decimal place, always very important to remember what, what format they're asking you to put the question into, or the answer into the percentage discount given on the Bucky's selling price, right? So it's wanting it as the percentage of the selling price, not the total due. Again, it's important to read what's being asked. So let's just quickly write that down. Let me just make sure you can see what I'm seeing. Question one, remember always to label, okay? So the discount is 6,140 over the selling price, which is 16008.7.72. And it asks as a percentage. So we're going to times it by 100. Okay. It's important, right? Because that is how we determine percentages. So you must remember that this is the format we want. Also, importantly, make sure that you are typing this correctly into your calculator. Okay. And it is 3.8. 83%, but what format did it ask us for? One decimal place. So it's just going to be 3.8%. Okay, perfect. Let's now go to the next question. So the next question says, show how the amount, this amount here, was calculated. Okay, so that's this amount over there. So from what we should see, it should be this, minus this amount, plus this amount, plus this amount, plus this amount and plus this amount, okay? So let's just see if we if we put that into our calculator, whether, or let's write it down first, right? So 160087.72. Then we're gonna minus off or subtract off the discount. Then we're going to add on the smash and grab. Then we're gonna add on the door protector, add on the on the road charges, right? I'm not 100% sure what that is, but it's an additional charge and the transactional cost okay it's basically all these costs here the reason i took away the discounts is discount is a reduction in price right whereas the rest of these are increase in price so it's important to remember to frame these different cash flows so that you know whether um she is paying them or whether she is getting a discount on those payments okay so let's put all of this into our calculator let me just make sure you can see okay one six Zero zero eight seven point seven two minus six one four zero plus three five zero plus three five zero plus four two nine eight point two five plus one three one five point seven nine. Okay, let's see if we got the answer we wanted to. I'm just gonna write it in rand. The rand I got there. So the rand amount I got there was this amount. Okay, which matches up to that amount. So we basically have showed what we have done there, right? So we subtract off the discounts, we add the rest of the charges, okay? So what they're testing you here is whether you can demonstrate your understanding of what is actually being shown in the quotation, okay? So let's now move on to the next question. So these questions are gradually getting more difficult, right? But not too bad yet, okay? So it says, give one reason why customers would prefer to install the accessories extra as shown in the quotation. Well, you could give numerous reasons here, right? So it's for safety. It could be convenient, right? Just get your car with all its bells and whistles on already as opposed to having to bring it to other people, that sort of thing. I'm just going to say safety, right? Or you can say convenience. I hope I can spell this right. I think that's how you spell convenience. If I spelled it wrong, my bad. But okay, so that's just one of those sort of um, questions where they're asking you to interpret what is actually being asked, okay? They're asking you to be very specific about what you are actually seeing and what is being asked. So it's not just this blind application, 
Okay, so this is Mapocho has an investment of 1.25 million rand. You're living her best life. The money was invested as follows, right? So 27 months was the investment period, right? So 27 months is two years, right? And three months. Now you might be saying, how on earth do you know that? Well, remember, there are 12 months in a year. So one year is 12 months, two years is 24 months, and then we have three months left over. So it's two years and three months, okay? Then it says there was a 6% per annum um, interest rate of, and it was compounded annually. Now, I must give you a disclaimer, right? So the way that I'm going to show you how to do this interest equation right? I'm doing it according to the steer from the memo, but I fundamentally disagree with the way they're doing this because it's not actually how you do it in practice, right? Um, being uh, someone who specializes in financial maths, this is not the way you do it in practice. I'm going to show you the way they do it, but I'm going to state an assumption, right? Which basically undermines this compounded annually part, right? So I'm going to show you, but I just wanted to give you that upfront context. Okay. So it says, Show whether the interest earned on this investment is sufficient to cover the total price of 189880.41. So it's saying the interest, right? So you could be saying, oh, obviously there's enough money. She got 1.25 million rand. That's not the question. They're asking whether the interest on the investment, right, can be used to pay for the car, right, or for the bucky, and then she still has the 1.25 million. Okay, so it's important to understand that nuance. Okay. So let's figure out how much interest she earned over these 27 months. Okay. So she started with 1.25 million rand. Okay. So let's say year one. So in year one, right, she had this much money, right, and she earned 6% interest. Okay. Now you could be saying, okay, like that's all good and well. What does that mean? Okay, we'll put that into your calculator. You can write this also like this if you would rather write it out in millions, right? Which I maybe would actually suggest, right? So all I've done is I've times this by a million to get it to that form, okay? It's important to know how to convert between decimals and millions, okay? So we got that. We're going to say 6%. So in the first year, she got 75,000 rand. In interest. Okay. So now let's figure out how much she got in the second year. Well, now in the second year, right, she has, she still has her 25, 1.25 million, right? She's still got that amount, but she also has the interest that she earns in the previous year. Okay. And she earns interest on that amount as well. Okay. It's important to remember it's compound interest. She's earning interest on her interest. It's not simple where she's just earning interest on that 1.25 million. She's earning interest on the 1.25 million and the interest that she earns in the first year. Okay. Important to remember that. Okay. So let's now put that into our calculator. Okay. Make sure you put it in correctly. Okay. And excellent. So she earns in the second year 79 1,500. Okay. Now, this is the part where I said that I fundamentally disagree, right? So now instead of in the third year, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, imagine she invested it for a full three years. So I know she didn't invest it for a full three years. So don't get all hung up on that. But let's just say she did. Okay. So then we're saying, okay, she would earn interest on the amount she invested plus the interest she earned in the first year plus the interest that she earns in the second year, right? So this is saying if she had a full three years. I know she hasn't, but imagine she did, okay? So put that into your calculator. One, two, three, plus seven, five, zero, zero, plus seven, nine, five, zero, zero. Oh, goodness, I did some funky things there, okay? So she would have earned 84,270. That's how much interest she would have earned. But we know that actually she only earned interest for three months of 12 months. Okay. So the assumption they make here is that you earn interest linearly. Okay. So they, and you might be like, oh, what on earth does that mean, Marks? Well, they're basically saying, right, if she only earned for three out of 12 months, Take the 3 over 12 and times it by the amount she would have earned in the full year, 
right? So saying, instead of saying for the whole year, just take three months of the year, okay? So let's put that into our calculator, okay? So it's saying that this is actually how much interest she earns in that third year because, right? because she only actually earns interest for three months in that last year, okay? So this is not the perfectly correct way of doing it, all right? But this is the way they want you to think about it, okay? So I just want you to bear in mind that this is, we're making an assumption here that, that she earns interest the same in the first three months as she does in the, the, the other three sets of three months that come later in the year. That isn't actually the case, but it's, it's okay for you to do it this way. Okay, so don't get hung up on it. I just wanted to give you that disclaimer. Okay, so let's now add how much interest she earned over that period. So interest over, let me make sure you can see, over 27 months. So it's the 75,000 plus the 79,500 plus the 21,600 and, I mean, 21,067 and 50 cents. Okay, so put that into your calculator, add all of those guys together, and I'm getting 175, 567.50. Okay, so what it's saying there is that she, that's how much she's going to earn. It's not enough, do you see that? It's not enough to actually pay for the bucky. So Remember, answer the question, you must say, not enough, right? Not enough to purchase Bucky, okay? You must always answer the question. The math is there to help you answer the question, okay? So that's that question. Let's now move on to the last question of this question, which is on that. So that is something that comes up quite often, right? So don't get too hung up on it, but it's an important one to remember. Okay, let's see. So it says VAT in South Africa increased to 15%, right, with effect from 1 April 2018. The following shows how the dealer calculated the new increased VAT incorrectly. Okay, so originally when it was 14%, he just said the amount plus 14% of the amount, and he got that. So then here it said increase by 1%, and he just said that amount plus 1% of that amount, and he got that amount. Okay, so here he used the 160, he used 40% of the 160. Here he just said, okay, whatever it was at 14, plus an additional 1% of what that amount is. Okay, so then it says identify the mistake the dealer has made in calculating the new selling price. Hence, calculate the new selling price, including 15% fat. Okay. Now, let me show you what is the correct way of calculating it, and then we'll talk about why his is incorrect. So, the selling price, right, the selling price that we looked at before is this amount. Okay, that, that's the amount. That is 15%. So, we should say selling price plus that, right, or VAT inclusive, whichever way, is the selling price plus 15% times that selling price, right? Oh, goodness, sorry. Putting some weird stuff in here. Okay, and let's calculate what that is, and let's see whether he's actually wrong. Okay, just making sure I'm typing this in correctly. I think that's right. 0.72. Okay. And we get 184100.88. Now, if we compare that amount that we got there, right, to this amount that he got here, we can see that this is a bit smaller than that. Okay? And why is that? Well, you see what we did is we just changed this calculation that he did over here, and we changed this 14 to 15%. Okay? What he did is he said, okay, I'm just going to use whatever I calculated at 14% and add an extra 1% of this amount to that 14%. Whereas actually, he should have said 182500, right, plus 1% of the original selling price, 
right? You can't make it 1% of the increased VAT price. It has to be of the original price. And that's why he's getting the wrong answer. Okay, so that's very important to understand. It is a little bit of a difficult one to, to get your head around. But it's basically saying, what does that 15% VAT apply to? It applies to the selling price, right? It doesn't apply to this new VAT increase price. It always applies to that 160. And that's why it's best to calculate it like we did over here. Okay, so that is the end of 1.1. We'll move on to 1.2 in the next video. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Cheers, guys.